No one questions the commitment of elite footballers when they're battling it out on the field. They're not only willing to put their bodies through hell for victory, it's expected. Sometimes the hits are so hard, the players are knocked senseless. But where it used to be considered a badge of honour to get up and play on after being concussed, now brain trauma is being recognised for what it really is. A massive headache for all contact sports. And it's led to some of our greatest former athletes once again showing what heroes they really were. Suiting up with gowns and gloves isn't how you'd usually prepare for a visit with elite Australian athletes. So we're taking every precaution here, aren't we? Absolutely, yes. But this is no normal meet and greet. You see, the sports stars here are no longer alive, but they've done something more heroic in death than anything they've achieved on the field. By donating their brains to science, in a courageous attempt to uncover the confronting truth about concussion. And what's being discovered here might change how you view and play sport. Oh, geez, that looks awful. We see it all the time, put their bodies on the line in the name of winning the play. And he's uh, in trouble, and here he goes, just collapses. It may come with the territory of contact sport, the brutal truth is... I want to enjoy it, but you do see it from different eyes when you've lost someone to trauma. Those moments do trigger me a little bit, for sure. Sand pit. Bit of sunbaking here. Bit of sunbaking. <laughs> Shane was always bouncing a Sharon around somewhere. Mm -hmm. Renee Tuck's brother, Shane, was destined to play footy. You can see how excited he got playing football. Oh, yeah, you can see the joy yeah, in his face. Yeah, yeah. Footy was life. Footy was life. And it was no wonder, given he was the son of Hawthorne legend Michael Tuck. Running into history, it's one of the great performances in football. So it was a proud moment when Shane put on the footy boots for the Richmond Tigers in 2004. G'day, Michael. Hi, Steve. How are you going, mate? Uh, any advice going into tonight? <laughs> get out and get the football and do something with it. That's the main thing. He played 173 games over the next nine years before calling time on the field in 2013. Shane Tuck will play his last game after announcing his retirement. Not long after giving up AFL, Shane took up boxing for a short stint in the ring, another sport where head knocks are a reality. Still standing, a little weaker at the knees. He's not standing now. By then, though, Renee had begun to notice a change in her brother's behaviour as he started to show signs of depression and detachment. He started becoming very confused. He was getting a little bit vague. Sometimes you'd have to ask him things three times. And that's where it really started snowballing from there. Unfortunately, we tried medication. We tried electroconvulsive therapy, which is brain zapping for depression. Nothing. So you were watching your brother deteriorate, feeling completely helpless? Yep, absolutely you would look at him and know that he was leaving us slowly. He started seizing up and his motor skills were going into dementia. Um, and I sort of knew from a year out of trying as a family to get him back that we were in a lot of trouble. In July last year, Shane took his own life. He was 38. It's the phone call you never want to receive. No, the one I knew that was coming. Oh, just lost every ounce of air in me and my knees went on me and I just, yeah, just broke my heart. You'd lost your little brother. I had lost my brother before he died but I lost him physically forever that day. And that was, um, yeah, the worst day of my life so far. 
and Shane was a very good boy and I'll miss him very, very much. Shane's heartbroken family laid their son and brother to rest, suspecting there was a more sinister force driving his decline. My mother knows her children very well and she said to me, there is no way I will let him go down with that brain. We need some answers. To try to find those answers, the family made the brave decision to give their son's brain to science. And it's now stored here, inside the Australian Sports Brain Bank at Sydney's RPA Hospital, alongside 19 other athletes. So this is an actual human brain we're looking at? That's right, yes. And even this, this extraordinary stage, facility is helping unearth secrets that would otherwise be taken to the grave. That's not something you can recognise while the person is alive. That's right. Not until they've passed. That's right, okay. yes. And For the first stage, time, Associate Professor Michael Buckland wants to show yes. us what a damaged really brain looks like. It's incredibly fragile. If you can imagine just all the bumps you get mm. in a game of contact sport. In the brains of elite athletes, he's looking for signs of a condition known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. So we know usually CTE starts up here at the depths of these valleys of the cortex. It's a cruel uh, so degenerative really... disease that has been associated with mental health issues dementia and a decline in motor skills. We don't know how common it is. Mm. What we do know is that it's incredibly rare outside the context of repetitive head injury. And you can imagine uh, with hits to the head, the brain is sort of sloshing about and banging up against the side of the skull. And are we talking about all sporting codes here or is... The theme is repetitive knocks to the head. Mm -hmm. So any sport where you sustain a lot of blows to the head, that's where you're at risk. As a rugby union and rugby league veteran, Ray Price played as hard as anyone. Probably the best hands in rugby league. He's best known for his 11 years at the Parramatta Eels, where he gained a reputation for being fearless. Price is in. So you really threw your body on the line, Ray, out but there. If, if you're going to do something, you do it. And, and that's what I did. As unfazed as he seems watching these hard hits, his wife Sandy feels otherwise. Even when you watch a game and you hear that wank, you know, the two bodies yes. going together, it, it freaks me out completely. How many times were you concussed in your career? Oh, one or two, I think. <laughs> you say that with a smile. Were there a few more? Uh, yeah, look, I, I didn't get uh, concussed every uh, game. Thankfully. Oh, yeah. I, you know, like, I, I had my share. Do you worry about Ray's health? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because he played harder than a lot of other players. I know they all played hard. Mm. But he, as you said, he did take a lot of knocks. And I'm his wife, I have to look after him. Do I don't have to, but I do. <laughs> Sandy has reason to be concerned about her husband's health. Five months ago, Ray was diagnosed with dementia following a harrowing incident. Yeah, I went for a walk about uh, one time. For four or five hours? I, yeah. Lost. I walked skin off my feet. Really? Yeah. Wasn't impressed. In Campbelltown, the early hours of the morning. Yeah, and I don't know why I did it. Okay. He was quite vague. Luckily, while he was out walking through Campbelltown, he pulled over a driver and he said, do you know where I am? And the driver said, I know where you are and I know who you are. And the driver rang the police and the ambulance and they took him to Campbelltown Hospital. And the neurologist there did quite a few tests and scans, hence the, um, they said that, okay, it looks like we have early dementia happening here. Yeah, so that I frightened the daylights out of I me. I wanted to see Campbell, dear. I've never been so scared. But Ray will never know whether his concussions and subsequent dementia are linked to CTE. 
because the condition cannot be diagnosed while someone is alive. It's a harsh reality for the families of those who do fall victim to the disease, a realisation Renee Tuck knows too well. Wow. So many emotions. The reality of knowing what he actually went through every day and how hard it really truly was and how hard he really fought for his life and for us, that was a bit of a heart stabber. He was broken and he was being ravaged and tormented and traumatised every day of his life. He was, he was living hell, that boy. What did you see when you examined Shane Tuck's brain? It was quite a shock to see it. Hello, Michael. Renee, Professor hello. Professor Michael. Hello. Eight months after her brother Shane Tuck took his own life, Renee has come to meet the man who's trying to give her family the answers they're so desperately seeking. Good. These hands are the ones that worked on my brother. It's pretty <laughs> emotional stuff. <laughs> After they bravely donated Shane's brain to science, Associate Professor Michael Buckland discovered the football star had been suffering from a condition known as CTE. So I'm going to have to swipe you in. Renee is here to see just how injured her brother was. So here we're looking at a, a healthy brain. There's no brown staining here at all. Uh -huh. And that's what I would expect in someone that was, say, at 40. When compared to this normal sample, the damage to Shane's brain, shown here, is clear to see. So this is the same region we just saw. Yeah, wow. From someone that was 40. And now we can see all this brown staining. Mm. This is the abnormal tau. Tau is a protein that stabilises nerve cell fibres in the brain. But with trauma, the nerves can be damaged, causing tau to take on an abnormal form and clog parts of the brain. Shane's condition was so severe, Michael Buckland didn't even need a microscope to diagnose him with CTE. So that's something that you can see with the naked eye? This is the first time I've been able to see it with the naked eye, and I was particularly struck. I couldn't believe I was seeing this in someone so young. Wow. I just yeah. feel so sorry for him. Oh. <laughs> Poor bugger. Anyway, I'm good. <clears throat> just having a moment. Are you right? Really? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah? Yeah, thank you. It's just hit you now, hasn't it? That's oh, it just feels... Yeah. I just feel for him so much. The Australian Sports Brain Bank has received donations from four AFL players, and Michael Buckland has found CTE in three of them. The first case was discovered in January last year, when football great Polly Farmer was diagnosed with the disease after succumbing to a long battle with dementia and depression. Danny Frawley was famous for going in hard. Now there's hard evidence he paid for it. CTE was also found in the brain of legend Danny Frawley, who took his own life aged 56. And then came Shane Tuck's diagnosis three months ago. We have to be careful not to over-extrapolate from such small numbers. We're selecting for the at-risk population. What it does tell me, though, is that uh, when you look at that at-risk population, it is definitely there. It is not hard to find if you look in the right places. And that, I guess, the, I mean, the three cases that were found span several generations of football players. So it, it would suggest to me that CTE has been around in the code for quite some time. In a sign that both the AFL and NRL are taking head knocks seriously, they've introduced stand down periods of almost two weeks for players who've been concussed. B codes are starting to take concussion and brain damage more seriously? Yes, but they've got to keep at it mm. or they won't have anyone to play. I've got all this stuff here that keeps it hot in my mind. So, you know, it's, it's very easy to keep remembering back. 
For NRL great Ray Price, there's only one way for everyone to learn more about the impact of concussion. So Ray, you've decided to pledge your brain to the Australian Sports Brain Bank? Yep. Well, if I can save someone's life, you know, it's not going to do me any good when I die. Ray is now one of more than 350 people who will give their brains to Michael Buckland's team once they die. And there are bound to be many more. Following the death of Danny Frawley, the Victorian coroner has recommended the AFL encourage players to donate their brains. And for you, what's the end game here? I want to be able to diagnose it during life. That will then inform clinical trials on how to treat it. So if I retire and there's clinical trials of treatments for CTE, I'd be a very happy man. So you do watch the game differently now? Yeah, a little bit. I must admit, I do. I love it all the same, mm. but seeing young boys get hit to the deck makes my heart stop for that minute second. I look inside myself and see my heart is black. That Shane Tuck's legacy will now be helping future generations of sports people is welcome news for Renee and her family as they try to recover from the loss of their brother and son. He was actually leaving behind a tormented hell on earth life and Professor Buckland explaining how just how bad his brain was makes me understand so much more where he was coming from when he said, I'm not OK. But a broken arm's a broken arm and it's a cast and it's fixed. But when someone's brain is basically rotting away on them and it's turning against them mm. and it's making every day a war for themselves to even try and continue, how you could ever expect someone to push through that, I don't know. So do you think more footballers or sports stars really in general should be thinking about donating their brains? Oh, I would love that. I think that would be so selfless and heroic and amazing. That's exactly what it's all about. And ultimately it saves lives. If this story has raised any issues and you need to speak with someone, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.